Hi everyone, welcome to the second Amazing Chemistry here at Eastern New Mexico University Department of Physical Sciences. So uh, I'm Dr. Stephen Karpowitz. Um, I'll be doing the first experiment here and then two of my colleagues uh, will be doing subsequent experiments and hopefully this should be really fun. We'll learn a lot of cool stuff today about just uh, the nature of the physical universe. The first experiment that I want to tell you about is thinking about what is the composition of some of the drinks that we uh, encounter in everyday life. So for example, I went to the grocery store yesterday and I bought a variety of different kinds of milk. Fat-free milk, whole milk, low fat, reduced fat, chocolate milk. Well, have you ever wondered what's the difference between them? Right? Because they have these different names, but they all kind of look the same. Of course, except for the chocolate milk. But what we, I want to find out with an experiment today is, is what in fact is the difference between them? So the difference seems to be about fat, right? Fat free, low fat, reduced fat. Well, what does that mean? What do they mean by fat? So for example, on fat free, total fat 0%. Whereas, in whole milk, total fat, 10%. Well, what do they mean by 10%, 0%? Well, they're saying how much fat is in the water. And so what I want to do is can I separate out that fat from the water to see how much is actually present? So to do that, I need to spin these really fast to force all the water down, to get it away from the fat. So what we have here is an instrument that's going to spin these samples really, really fast. It's called a centrifuge. And by doing so, it can apply really great amounts of force. In fact, it will uh, produce 14,000 times the force of gravity. Imagine if you were you know, under 14,000 times, you'd get crushed. Well, that's the whole idea here. It's just going to crush the sample and force the water to separate out from other things. So let's prepare one of the tubes. I already prepared a few others. But let's get some of the chocolate milk in this tube. So I labeled the tube chocolate so we know which is which, even though it's kind of obvious. And I will pour some of the chocolate milk in here. And let's see. All right, there we go. So I have brought this up. Oops. I brought this up to this level, 40 milliliters. Okay. So let's now load the instrument. So just to confirm, at the beginning, low fat, whole milk, fat free. They all pretty much look the same, right? We can't really tell the difference. So I'll load those in here. And I had chocolate, chocolate milk, reduced fat, Oops, being clumsy here. And just as a comparison, water. Is it possible to separate out water? Probably not, right? But let's do that as uh, a comparison. So we load up all the tubes, and I have to tighten this thing up because it's going to be spinning really fast. We don't want anything flying out, right? Okay. So, speed. This is how much force relative to the force of gravity I'll be applying. 14,500 times the force of gravity. That's a lot of uh, force. How fast is it going to be spinning? Well, we'll see in just a moment. Let me set this thing for 15 minutes. If we need to stop it early, that's okay. And we'll just run it at room temperature here. So I'll get started. So we can't quite see it, of course, because there's no window, you know, but it's, you might be able to hear it's speeding up kind of like a car engine. 
and we can see as it speeds up, switch to how fast is it spinning? So it's accelerating, accelerating. And there we go. So it's spinning at 11,000 rotations per minute. That is, it's spinning 11,000 times per minute. So that's pretty fast, right? All right, so this will go for about 15 minutes. We'll see if we can separate out that fat from the water. But while we're waiting, of course, we'll go do the other two experiments. So let's walk down to a room where the other experiments are set up. So here at ANMU, this is the science building. Uh, this is one of the main laboratory buildings where we have some classrooms and many of our science labs for chemistry, biology, and physics. So many of our students who are interested in science take classes in this building and learn a lot of the cool stuff that we do in the uh, various fields I just mentioned, chemistry, biology, and physics. So if you're interested in ever visiting EMMU or having a tour, you know, many of the people here are happy to show you around. It doesn't matter what your age is, uh, but that's, you know, it's always a good idea to just learn out what's going on in the community and, of course, what's happening, you know, at uh, exciting places like EMMU. So in chemistry, we... I am a biochemist. I'm interested in the chemistry of living organisms and the molecules that make up living organisms. That's why I selected an experiment involving milk, because as we know, milk is made by cows and is isolated from cows. So the various molecules that are found in the milk are just, are the chemicals made and they're biological molecules. So that's, again, why uh, I'm interested in the composition there of the milk, is just what sort of biomolecules are there, and that's the purpose of the experiment. Can we separate out those biomolecules? My colleagues are different kinds of chemists uh, who are interested in other kinds of molecules, and they'll be able to tell you about their research. Hello, everyone. So I'm Dr. Wang. I'm an organic chemist and a pharmaceutical chemist, so most of my work on the drug discovery. So I'm working on the cancer, cancer drugs. All right, so if you're interested, you're welcome to visit my research lab here at ENMU. And today I'm going to show you some kitchen experiments in the organic chemistry. So but first, remember, safety is always the highest priority. You need a uh, safety goggle, gloves, lab coats to protect you. All right. So first, let's introduce uh, uh, the materials so we're going to use today. First one, what is this in the kitchen? Right. This is a uh, white vinegar, white vinegar, and baking soda. Right. It's also in the kitchen, and we need a two plastic funnel plastic funnel. You know, you, you can find this in the kitchen as well. And the balloons, right, balloons. And a holder, a holder, clamp, and rumble flasks, all right? But the first, uh, let's uh, get, give you a question first, all right? So vinegar, white vinegar, and baking soda, what are those uh, uh, chemicals or compositions here? What is vinegar? What is baking soda? So you know, you saw them in the kitchen, but do you know what's inside of there? So in chemistry, we have to know the atomic scale or molecular scale, right? So what is vinegar? Vinegar is called acidic acid. Acidic acid is CH3COOH. All right, this is a molecular formula and let's draw them out, draw them out, the structures, all right? CH3, C, 
C-O-O-H. All right, so here is CH3COH. This one is vinegar, okay? And the second, baking soda. What is baking soda? Right, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, right? This is the baking soda. So if we mix them, what will happen? Let's look at them. First one, let's pour some vinegar into the round bottle flask. Right. Second, let's get some baking soda in the bowl. And let's put the balloon on the rum on our flask. And uh, then we need a slightly, you see the baking soda now is in the balloon here, all right? And then let's slightly put the baking soda into the rum on our flask. Whoa, look at this. Look, what happened here? Look at it here. You can see it's bubbling, right? You get a lot of bubbles there, and you collect some gas. You see, you collect some gas here. So what happened? What's the chemistry behind this phenomenon? Okay, you can see it's still bubbling. If you look, take a look at it here, you can see the bubbling here, all right? So here is a question, what happened? You can see we have vinegar, we have baking soda, and what do we have? If I mix them together. Uh, baking soda. So vinegar plus baking soda will give us what kind of reactions here, okay? So remember vinegar, which is uh, called uh, acid, right? Acid. And the baking soda is base, is base, right? So acid and the base, they will, they can neutralize each other, right? So vinegar plus baking soda will give us sodium acetate, right? Sodium acetate, what is sodium acetate? CH3COO minus Na plus, right, this is a called a sodium acetate. And carbon dioxide, right, and a carbon dioxide. And water, right, and water. So why, what happened here? This is because Acid here, it's a proton donor, okay? It's a proton donor. Acid, a proton donor. Base, baking soda, it is a proton acceptor. So this proton will be right connected with this uh, carbonate here to generate sodium acetate, right? Sodium acetate, this one. and carbon dioxide and water. So that's why you will see the bubbling and you can see we collected the gas over here, 
Okay, so the gas we collect here, it is called carbon dioxide. All right, did you get the correct answer? All right, remember if you want to do anything of this experiment, you must have all of the safety requirements. All right, and after everything is done, we will use a waste disposal container to clean the area we have, uh, we have did our experiment. All right, if you have any questions, you can talk to me, I'm Dr. Wong. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Tian. I hope you enjoy the fat separation by Dr. Kapowitz, teaching still to belong by Dr. Wong. I'm an analytical chemist. Analytical chemistry is a subdiscipline of chemistry. It's about obtaining, processing, communicating information about composition and structure of matter. In analytical chemistry, we try to answer four questions. What is it? How much is there? Is stuff there? How to get a pure stuff? What I'm trying to show you today is trying to address the third question. Is the stuff there? The demonstration we say flame test. Flame test is about visually determining the presence of a metal ion in a compound based on light when heated in flame. We know we have about 120 elements, chemists, based on their structure and property, arrange them in a table that's called periodic table. And particularly, what we are going to detect today, I have five different compounds, strontinium sulfate, cupric chloride, sodium carbonate, copper sulfate, and potassium chloride. And particularly, I'm going to show you two experiments. The very first experiment is about using this piece of glass. We say watch glass. What we are going to do, we will make small pile of these compounds onto the watch glass. And then we will wet them with very flammable liquid ethyl alcohol. And after that, we'll simply use match to set fire on them, then watch the color. By the way, we have open flame. We really need to take extra precautions. As my colleagues mentioned, we need to have a lab coat, we need to have a chemical splash goggle or safety goggle. And for those of you who have a beautiful long hair, that must be confined. And when we demonstrate this experiment, we would like to have all this at least eight feet away from the open flame. Okay, let me show you how we get this on the watch glass. This piece of metal, we say chemical spatula allow us to get some chemical onto this piece of watch glass. And in between, we really need to make sure we clean the spatula so that we do not contaminate next sample. For that cleaning, we simply use Kim wipe. This one here, sodium carbonate. This 
this one here has a light blue color, copper sulfate. Last one here, potassium chloride. As I assure you, this is ethanol, very flammable. We just use a few drops to wet each of these pile of solids. Okay, once I use match, I'll ask my colleague to switch light off for better observation. Stephen, please. We see red, we see green, we see yellow, we see somehow like blue color, and maybe a little violet there. Is that beautiful? We'll wait when all the flame disappear. By the way, this is not chemical reaction for the solid. We simply use heat to excite the electrons from lower energy to higher energy. When fall back to lower energy, light is emitted. Different metal ions have a different electron nature, and therefore the emitted light is different, show very beautiful color. Uh, ask my caller, Dr. Wong, would you please switch light on? Thank you. Okay, my colleagues highly emphasized laboratory safety. When we've done this experiment, all these solids, we cannot, you know, dump them to the trash can or the sink. We'll have to use specified designated waste bottle to dispose them. So I will do that when we done the show. What I'm going to do next is about using this device. This device is called Bonson Burn. We'll have this piece of hose connected to our gas line. We'll make sure we have the uh, right connection, I mean no leakage. And what I'm going to do next, I'm trying to use the commercially available um, inoculating loop. The inoculating loop here has this metal stick. And then we'll have a clean uh, metal loop. This metal loop is made of mixture of nickel and chromium, two other different metals. And what we'll do, we'll connect this loop into this metal stake or holder. Once put in, then we try to tighten it. We can switch from this loop to another for different experiment. So 
what I'm going to show you here, we will use this ethanol liquid for cleaning that loop. And then I will have that wet loop touch these five chemicals. And then we'll bring the chemical coated loop into the hottest spot of the Bunsen burner flame. Try to see whether we have the similar color. When we use Bunsen burner, we need to be very careful. So the first thing, we got to open the gas line, and then we'll try to set fire on the Bunsen burner. And you can adjust the very bottom to control the amount of gas sent to the burner. And also, you can rotate to control the amount of air sent to the Bunsen burner. And obviously, the Bunsen burner here, we have uh, you know, some yellow color, maybe due to some um, contamination here. So let's say we use this open uh, flame. Let me uh, try this first. We have this uh, loop. I will clean that in liquid ethanol and make sure we have ethanol away because this is highly flammable. And then we'll try to hit that on the flame. And you see, it's just like a red hot color, which basically means we have no other beautiful color show up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm trying to wet this loop. And then we'll have the wet loop touch copper sulfate. Then we have the wet loop touch the copper sulfate compound. Hopefully I can pick some Frankly, not much on the wire, which wet again. Okay, Stephen, would you please turn the light off? Now let's see how this one show up. I hope you see at the very beginning, green color. Let me show you one more time. Look at the top part. Above the loop, you see the green color. Now let's do the same for another one. What I'm really want to show you here would be strontium chloride. We wet the loop, try to clean that uh, loop in ethanol. Then we try to have strontium sulfate attach on the loop. Not much. You see a red color on the open flame? Let me try again. Beautiful red color for strong team. Next one, I'm trying to show you for our copper sulfate. Maybe let me switch to another piece of wire. Uh, Steven, can I try for you to turn light on? Because this might need to be further cleaned. Thanks for that. We have a new loop connected to this metal stick. We try to clean that in um, ethanol. And when wet, we touch copper sulfate. You got a little amount there. Can I probably switch that off, Stephen? You see green color? Let me repeat one more time. Let me try to do the same from this spatula. Let's try to clean this spatula. 
in afternoon. And then let's have this uh, copper sulfate. I hope this will give you larger flame to watch. Is that beautiful green color? And I do not want to show you the one for sodium because sodium will give us a beautiful yellow color. Seems like our flame somehow has that yellow color. So at this moment, we done to switch the uh, Bunsen burner. We first need to make sure we close the gas line. The gas line need to be closed tightly. Thanks so much. We hope you enjoy the show and we are more than welcome to have you join us at Eastern New Mexico University. I really want to thank Mr. Hather for, her, uh, for his time and help. See you next time. Hi everyone, back to me just to finish up uh, this experiment where we were looking at the milk. So while the other experiments were occurring, remember I was spinning down those tubes filled with milk. And since I was in the other room, I just grabbed the rotor, brought it down here. So let's open this up and see what happened inside. Take the tubes out. Okay, so this is fat-free milk. I don't really see much difference, right? There doesn't look to be much difference there. Here's whole milk. What the, do you see that? What is that? That might be the fat, right? Let's see some of the other ones. Low fat, hmm. that seems to have that layer of fat on it as well. What about chocolate milk? Well, <laughs> all of the chocolate powder went down to the bottom, right? Because it was obviously heavier than the water. But what about, oh, what's this? Notice the, the white there? just like the other ones. There's the fat that went up on top. Reduced fat, let's see. Oh, I see a little bit there, you know? You can see. And finally, oh, I guess it's not really possible to separate out water because since it's pure water, there's nothing to separate, right? So the question was based on, well, first off, we could say, were there different things in the liquids? And we could say based on this, yes, right? We can see at least that there's this watery substance and then this fatty substance. And that seems to match up with what the bottles say about, for example, you know, 10% fat. Well, that's what that solid stuff that was accumulating on top as we were spinning. Well, the, also another question we could ask is, is the amount of that fat matching up to what it says on the bottle? I don't think I spin, uh, ran this in the machine long enough to really get a good separation, but by kind of looking maybe at the difference between reduced fat and chocolate. Okay, so they look kind of the same, but if I turn these, this one's actually a little bit thicker than this one is. But also you can tell, like, look at the solution. It's very watery now. It's not as viscous, that is, it's not as thick as it was before, because that's the point. All that thick fat has come out. It's much more like water. we compare again that reduced fat to the whole milk. 
Oh, there we go again. Yeah, look at that thick layer of fat there that we've now separated out. You know, the interesting thing is if we compare the fat free to the whole milk, now that I've separated out that fat, look at the liquids. They're now the same thing. So what is fat free milk? Well, it's just regular whole milk that they got from the cows that they did exactly the experiment I did and they removed all this fat from it to make the fat free. Well, what's the difference now? And so we can see that based on how much fat is present, there's whole milk, chocolate milk, then we have the reduced fat, low fat, and fat free. 10% fat, 10%, 6%, 3%, and zero. So when they process milk at dairy plants, they simply do an experiment similar to what I just did today, where they separate out some of the fat and the more that they separate it out, eventually as they remove all the fat, they get to this very watery fat free. Now, I should just say, why does it still have a white color to it? That has to do with other proteins and other molecules that are present that are soluble in the water and cannot be easily separated just by spinning, at least by spinning at the speeds that I was running it at. And so you can see that, yes, these things have very similar movement. They're both watery. So hopefully you have learned that many of the common foods we eat, in this case milk, are in fact compositions of different kinds of molecules. And these different kinds of molecules normally are suspended in one another. That is the, well, the solid fat, think about like butter, right? It's like if you were taking solid butter and just dissolving it in water, it's mixed in there. But if we use special techniques, we can separate it back out. So hopefully you learned something today about the composition of li liquids and a little bit about the different kinds of biological molecules in our food, water and fat. Thank you very much.